Scandal in Belgravia doesn't just fuck up the most important non-protagonist character in the entire canon behind maybe Moriarty, it also contains the scene. To me, it is always the scene. You will seldom hear me mention it under any other name. In my eyes, it eclipses and predominates the whole of the series. It's the crown in the… crown jewels? of the whole sordid affair. The scene combines all the worst aspects of this fucking show and compresses it down into a solid diamond of shit. The mystery Sherlock is called in to solve before the Adler thing starts is about a guy who's found dead with seemingly no apparent cause. We're shown nothing, no clues that could possibly leave a keen-eyed viewer with the chance to figure it out. He solves it, but doesn't explain what happened or how he figured it out or why, and just stops bothering with it. Then, in an extravagant and fucking ridiculous scene, him and Adler sci-fi imaginate their way through a scene neither of them have actually been to, and Irene discovers that… a fucking boomerang did it. A boomerang. 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 We've talked before about times where the show has pulled something out of its ass, but this fucking scene puts them all to rest. Based on nothing, based on no clues we've been given whatsoever, Sherlock leads Irene to the conclusion that a boomerang did it. And the show presents this as Sherlock being a massive super mega genius. We get shots of Adler making googly eyes at him because she's so attracted to him now that she knows he successfully solved the stupidest written scene in television history. The epic soundtrack swells, and everyone wishes they were being killed by a fucking boomerang. The key to mystery stories, the white, hot, burning core of the genre that makes it what it is, is being given information, just enough that you could maybe figure out what was happening, and then having a character show you something about the information you managed to miss, or put the pieces together in a way you wouldn't expect. But to make sure you can't possibly solve it before Sherlock does, because he's supposed to be the most amazing special boy in the world, they can't risk giving you too much information. So they craft a story in which you're shown basically nothing, and then told, bing, it's a legendary serial killer I just made up. Bing! Someone else told me the answer off screen. Bing! It was a fucking boomerang! The audience will never really accept Sherlock as smart, because they're never given the pieces for themselves and then presented with a solution they wouldn't have thought of. Instead, they're told next to nothing, and then Sherlock walks in with the information you didn't have, or does something unbelievably unrealistic. You got that from one look? Definitely the new sexy. The show is edited as if you're supposed to, like Adler, be completely in awe of this genius, but that's never going to happen. Contrast is required. This is precisely why puzzles are fascinating in the first place. There's a tangible, emotional reaction to figuring out how to solve something and putting something together. Similarly, for a mystery story to work, you have to be shown the problem and the clues before it's solved, so you have a chance to do it yourself and then marvel at seeing someone else find the solution. You're entertained by seeing someone else solve a puzzle you can't because you recognise they've seen something you haven't. Sherlock gives you a meaningless glimpse of a trivial piece of the puzzle, then produces the finished puzzle and tells you it was very hard, I promise. In this show, the viewer's never given a chance to observe, so there's nothing for Sherlock to reveal he observed. So you're left with an incredibly expensive sequence of elaborate camera tricks shot on an Arri Alexa, featuring a man telling you he's very smart because he observed events you never got the chance to observe better than you. Look at all these hard-working people, dragging their camera rigs all the way out here so they can film a smooth transition, laying all their dolly tracks and lugging a couch all the way out there and carefully planning and timing dozens of shots, doing excellent professional work. And it's all in service to a mystery story where you're not told anything, so you're not engaged with it at all, and then at the end, you're told a fucking bullshit explanation that you could not have seen coming, and he was really smart, you just have to trust me. Why is the camera spinning so much? Is it to make this revelation feel more dramatic? Or is it to simulate the spinning of a boomerang? Do, do boomerangs even spin? Is that why they did this? Fittingly, this scene keeps coming back in my nightmares to taunt me with how stupid it is. Let's have a look at that guys, cut it. This scene is so bad, it almost makes you forget that the final scene of this episode is Sherlock single-handedly fighting Al-Qaeda with a machete. I half expected the boomerang to come back and take a couple of guys out for him.